Так, уважаемые члены государственного комитета, members of the state commission, господа, которые здесь, Here, ladies and gentlemen, everybody who's in the room, на заседании here today at the state commission meeting, we are here to uh, approve the prime and backup crew composition for Soyuz TMA-22, the general design review, the technical committee of the Federal Space Agency, as well as the state commission, having discussed the reports and the technical status reports on the booster and the spacecraft. Uh, hereby verified that everything's per schedule of the launch pad, the launch to take place on the 14th with the docking on the 16th. There's plenty of work to be done during a 122-day mission. And yesterday, per the uh, pre-launch activity schedule, we finished our first launch day. As I said, we have no doubt in our minds that both the rocket and the vehicle are ready. All the activities have been done at the appropriate level of quality and reliability. And we are confident, as far as the knowledge of the crew is concerned, especially considering that the crew had a broader, bigger, more in-depth opportunity to study and prepare for this mission. It's a major mission that's ahead of them, especially considering the uh, tighter handover schedule, as we already mentioned before. And so with that, let's hear the report on the readiness of the crew from the head of the Gagarin Cosmonaut Training Center, Mr. Krikalov. Thank you. Dear members of the State Commission, in order to perform the spaceflight per ISS 29-30 program, on their way to uh, the International Space Station, we had uh, the following crew members finish the training. Anton Kapler of the Soyuz, Commander, Station Flight Engineer. Anatoly Ivanishin, Vehicle Flight Engineer, Station Flight Engineer. And Daniel Burbank, FE2 for Soyuz Vehicle and the ISS-29 Flight Engineer 2 and ISS-30 Commander. The backup crew consists of Gennady Padelka, Soyuz Vehicle Commander, Station Flight Engineer, Sergey Revin, Vehicle Flight Engineer, Station Flight Engineer, and Joseph Akaba, FE2 for the Soyuz Vehicle and Station Flight Engineer. All the crew members have passed their uh, qualification exams, have completed their integrated simulations. For the uh, Chief Medical Commission finding, they're all uh, deemed ready for the space mission. The Interagency Commission on the Crew Readiness that took place at the GCTC have reviewed the results of their training and uh, decided that ISS-29 and 30 crew members are ready for their mission aboard the uh, Soyuz TMA-22 and their mission on the station. The pre-launch program has been completed based on everything I've just said. We would like to uh, propose that the State Commission confirm the prime crew consisting of uh, Vehicle Commander Anton Kaplerov, Anatoly Ivanishin, Vehicle Flight Engineer, and Dan Burbank, FE2 for the vehicle. And the backup crew consisting of Vehicle Commander Gennady Padelka, Sergey Revin, Flight Engineer for the vehicle, and FE2 for the vehicle, Joseph Akaba. That's all I have. Thank you. Our next speaker is Mr. Lapota on the readiness of the uh, launch facility. I'm here to report to the State Commission. We have completed all the required scheduled activities, the launch pad, the launch facility at large, the vehicle, the rocket, are ready. There are no issues impeding our subsequent activities, as far as we know. Thank you. Let's confirm the crew composition consisting of Prime Crew, Vehicle Commander, Anton Shkaplerov, Anatoly Venishin, Flight Engineer, Dan Burbank, FE2, and the backup crew consisting of Vehicle Commander Gennady Padelka, Flight Engineer 
Sergei Revin, Flight Engineer 2, Joseph Akaba. Item 2 of our findings is to continue all the scheduled activities based on Mr. Lapota's report, getting ready for the uh, fueling activities and uh, the subsequent launch. Uh, if there's no dissenting opinions, let's uh, have these be the official findings. So congratulations, first of all, it goes to the Prime Crew, the two uh, rookies that have been on their long path towards this day, and this is their first time around. We have no doubt that you'll be able to uh, perform all your activities during the 122-day mission. You will perform all the uh, tasks that are set for you as part of that program. It'll be... Uh, somewhat difficult for the first 40 days up until the second complement of your increment arrives at the station. When the station uh, uh, proceeds into the, its, its full-on nominal operations, then you'll be able to take a breather. Our next speaker is Mr. Rogozhnikov on behalf of the Internet, um, IBMP Institute in the Federal Medical Agency. Congratulations, fellas. You're on your uh, final few steps towards launch. Let there be as few off-nominal situations as possible. Be patient, be calm, keep medicine in mind. Countermeasures is the ground rule for the successful 122-day mission. Always keep countermeasures inside. Take care, good luck, and see you back here. Gennady, as far as your uh, backup crew is concerned, I can't help but saying good luck. Make sure that everything that you have planned comes true. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Rogozhnikov. Our next speaker is the special representative of the uh, President of the Kazakhstan Republic at Baikonur. Thank you. Dear crews, Congratulations. I'd like to wish that uh, success accompanies you in your uh, accomplishing of all the tasks, as difficult as they may be. As difficult as they may be, everybody who's here in the room has no doubt that you'll be able to pull it off. So, good luck. Make sure that it's a, uh, as uh, down to earth, in the calm, most logical sense of the word as possible. And then have a successful return, and when you come back, we'll be here to welcome you. Next speaker is Michael Safredini. Thank you. NASA ISS Program Manager. Uh, it's good to see you here tonight. Congratulations on uh, getting to this point and being ready for this mission. As was mentioned, you're uh, embarking on a relatively unique uh, mission uh, all the way across the board. You're starting off with the first uh, three-person direct crew handover that we've done in some time in the program, and with only uh, four days to get the handover done, you guys are going to be very busy. And you have another, a couple other unique tasks. You're going to uh, welcome the first uh, commercial cargo vehicle uh, to ISS, and that should be very exciting. Uh, we're going to change out uh, all the main computers on the USOS, and that'll that'll keep you busy. And of course, you have the Russian segment EVA that uh, that'll be very exciting as well. So you're very prepared for your mission. You're well trained. You guys are ready to go. I look forward to seeing you on orbit. Good luck. Godspeed. Next, we'll hear some words from the crew. First, we'll hear some uh, words from Mr. Shkaplerov, the vehicle commander for Prime Crew. First of all, I'd like to say thank you to the Russian Space Ag Agency Management for having entrusted us with this mission. It really and truly will be difficult and different. Namely, we'll have only four-day period for handover, but I can assure you that the crew is fully ready. And as the station, uh, as, this, as the vehicle commander, I, I am confident of that. Thank you, Anton. And Anatoly, you're next. I would like to thank everybody who had been immediately involved in our training and getting us ready for the space mission to all those who uh, have been designing, building, fine-tuning all the space assets that will be operating literally a day from now. And I can assure you that we'll make the best we can of an effort to uh, to make good on your promise. Thank you. Mr. Burbank, Engineer 2. Engineer of, uh, instructor of, e specialist of, I want to thank the engineers, instructors, and the specialists for their uh, efforts. 
uh, Nashka Rabel Soyuz. For the uh, Soyuz vehicle, for the booster, equipage, and for my crew, ISS-29 and 30 are fully ready, and thank you for all the efforts you've made. Thank you. Thank you. Well, in conclusion, I want to say, uh, and I address this, address this to Anatoly, Anton and Dan, for this uh, mission that's ahead of you, uh, you're ready for it. Everything that you've been doing has been uh, steps towards a successful completion of this mission. Anything that may be uh, coming your way during the upcoming 122-odd days, you'll be able to pull it off, have a great successful launch, and then a soft landing. We'll be seeing you off, and then we'll be looking forward to having you back. Thank you very much, and congratulations. Дорогие друзья, Dear friends, старт ракеты носителя Союз с транспортным пилотом. The Soyuz launch vehicle launch carrying Soyuz Team A22 is scheduled to take place on the 14th of the month at 10:14 local time from the Cosmodrome Baikonur. The State Commission has just confirmed the prime and backup crew composition for ISS-29, ISS-30 increment. Allow me to uh, present the prime crew, Anton Shkaplar of Roscosmos, remember, Soyuz Commander, Station Flight Engineer, and Natalia Ivanishin, Roscosmos, Soyuz and Station Flight Engineer. Daniel Burbank, NASA astronaut, vehicle flight engineer 2, ISS flight engineer 29, ISS, 29, ISS 30 commander, backup crew consisting of Gennady Padelka, Roscosmos cosmonaut, vehicle commander, station flight engineer, for ISS 29 and ISS 30 commander, Sergey Revin, flight engineer for the vehicle and the station, Joseph Akaba, NASA astronaut, Soyuz flight engineer 2, station flight engineer. Before we uh, ask our crew members the questions that we have, I would like to uh, introduce you uh, to this uh, teeny little man, Maxim Baikalov, who is the winner of the international uh, space drawing contest. He's only five years old. Nevertheless, his drawing design became the uh, basis of the patch design for this crew. He is here to talk to the cosmonauts and astronauts and enjoy the launch. Maxim, please come up here. Tell the crew something. Have a successful flight and come back here on Earth quicker. All the best to you. Thank you so much, Maxime. Can we have the hands touching? Maxim, you can talk to the crew through the glass. Hi, Max. It's good to see you. Thanks to your wonderful drawing, we have our uh, wonderful uh, spacecraft design. Max, would you take a look at everybody? Just like that. Smile. Now the left hand. And look just like that. And smile. We hope that you grow up to be a, a cosmonaut, at least, if not a famous artist. And Max, I would like to take this opportunity. We have an, a somewhat unofficial picture of our crew. I will sign it and address it to you so that while we're on our space mission, for uh, several months, you'll be able to have this picture to look at and remember that we met and you saw us go into space on our vehicle. Thank you so much. Max? Good job, Max. Now let's proceed to the traditional Q&A and ask the crew some questions. When you come up here, please uh, present yourself and then uh, ask, you know, address your question to a specific crew member. Good morning, NTV channel, Gary Himelnitsky. 
Anton. It's no secret that the Soyuz U booster used the same third stage, uh, same stage engines that, that performed autonomously on uh, progress launch. Are you uh, threatened by that at all? Have you been given your special tasks from the designer standpoint as far as what you're to be expecting? And because of the same anomaly, your launch has been delayed from September. Uh, did your science program suffer or get, get more intense? You'll have three brand new experiments that you'll be performing on the station. What are those experiments? And the last question, I know that one of you uh, is to be uh, performing an EVA. Is it going to be one of you that already has that experience, Dan, or is there going to be somebody else on the crew? Well, let's take it in an orderly fashion. There was like three questions there. The first one, was there any, is there any concern or any uh, doubt in our minds as far as the vehicle or as far as the booster that's going to be launching our vehicle, rather? We have no dark thoughts. We are confident in our uh, equipment. We talked to uh, Roscosmos in Energia Management, where we discussed these issues. These are the two organizations that are overseeing and supervising the booster preparedness. Plus, we had another progress launch in the meantime that was launched by, uh, by the same exact booster. Everything was nominal as uh, before. There's uh, over 100 launches uh, under its belt, so it was a one-off situation. What's been made more intense is the checkout procedures. There are cameras installed in all of the shops throughout all the facilities involved. So every step, every bolt that gets tightened gets supervised and um, checked out three or four times before it, before it gets uh, signed off as ready for flight. As far as our program, we have a great amount of scientific experiments, uh, over 200, about 100 for Roscosmos, and then uh, 50 for me, 50 for Anatoly. Some of them we, we stagger and uh, you know take turns or you know there are some that are uniquely designed for us individually and I have a few very interesting experiments for example the microsatellite the point is the progress that's about to depart the station that usually gets uh, stuffed with uh, cargo that's no longer needed and get, gets burned on the re-entry we'll actually have another mission Instead of the docking port, we'll, uh, on the docking port, we'll install a micro-satellite, the cheapest micro-satellite. After that, the vehicle will undock from the station, we'll uh, raise the orbit by 100 kilometers, and then we'll automatically shoot off the satellites, the sa satellite that will be in flight for several years. It's uh, chock full of all kinds of equipment, I'm not going to go into detail, but it'll be uh, doing a lot of good. Uh, for the benefit of our country and our, our space nations and the Earth. EVA-wise, there will be an EVA, there will be a spacewalk. Uh, uh, Mr. Konyenko and I will go EVA on Valentine's Day. It's easy to remember, it will be a, an interesting spacewalk. We'll have to uh, remove the Strela boom from DC-1 to MRM-2, and if there's any time or strength remaining in us, we'll be... Uh, uh, increasing the station defense, i.e. the uh, micrometeoroid uh, shields, in a couple of experiments that will uh, tell us uh, how the station is doing and how much longer into the future it can be extended, because right now it's one of the hot topics. How far into the future we can extend the uh, station's operational life. Maybe Anatoly can um, add something. Thank you. Let's uh, make sure that we only ask one question at a time for the future. Uh, Next. Question to Anatoly. We're from Irkutsk, and so are you. It's your hometown. We're here to see you off. This is your first flight, and so the question is, what will you be remembering as far as your home city, Irkutsk, is concerned? And will you be willing to look down from the station and see your hometown? Of course, I've lived in Irkutsk up until I uh, got admitted to the... Uh, 
Aviation Academy. I graduated high school there. I went to the institute there. I was an air trooper there, an amateur trooper, air trooper. And after I uh, failed to uh, get admitted to the institute, I was told that you know there's no future in you as an athlete. And then I got involved with the uh, uh, student aviation uh, club. We were building gliders. We, were, we would be the ones breaking them and then re rebuilding them. So, you know, there's a lot of memories. It's my hometown, and I will have the possibility to uh, look down on it from the station. Even though uh, um, the latitude will be a little off, but I will have an opportunity. Okay. What would you uh, want to say as your parting words to uh, the boys from Irkutsk who are dying to uh, uh, follow the path that you pursued? I want to say to them is uh, aspire towards what you're uh, being driven for and make sure that you achieve your goals as you're doing that. Thank you. I think you can expand that and address that to all of the boys everywhere. Please make sure your questions are loud and clear. Anybody else? Hello, Tom Barton, RT. A question uh, for the three crew going up on Monday. After Progress's crash in August, how nervous are you all about this mission? Progress'n the question has already been asked, but maybe Dan will take another stab at it. Well, our, our, our business that we, the things that we do is, are certainly difficult. Uh, space flight is difficult, but it is worthwhile. So, um, and I would also make one point. I think um, we feel very good about the analysis and the work that was done to verify um, the, uh, the integrity of the third stage, to verify the quality of the rockets. Um, a lot of very, very uh, difficult and diligent work was done to, uh, to verify that uh, the rocket's good. And, uh, and I'm not nervous about it. Um, I would also say that our rockets, our spacecraft, um, are different. They're unique from uh, the configuration that the Progress vehicle has in that ours have a, a launch abort system. So uh, whereas the Progress uh, was not able to make it to orbit, it had uh, that had happened uh, on a crewed vehicle, a manned Soyuz vehicle, that's well within the capability of the launch abort system. But, uh, but I feel, feel, feel very good about the work that's been done on, uh, on the rocket, and we're ready to go. Francisco Guaita for Spanish RT. Uh, I would like to ask about Mars, the topic about Mars. Uh, there was an experiment, Mars Piazzot, also with the rocket of Phobos. I would like uh, to have your feeling about how far we are from Mars and about what is your sensation in this moment uh, about, about Mars. Вопрос экипажу, значит, уже был проведен эксперимент Марс 500. И вопрос, насколько вы знаете об этом эксперименте и как далеко вы от Марса чувствуете себя на данный момент? Мы, конечно, интересуемся все, что... Of course, we're uh, really interested in everything space-wise, especially... Considering the experiments that um, allowed the humankind to uh, take a step forward, I particularly have the Mars 500 experiment in mind. We know it is not just an experiment. Our uh, uh, friends, cosmonauts, were there for the two-week and the 100-day period uh, increments, Artemyev and Rizansky. I can tell you that the experiment has proven to be a success. They came out in uh, sound and, sh and uh, sound health. 
И он, конечно, говорит о том, что... And this experiment overall tells us that, you know, Mars mission will be difficult, but uh, not unachievable. As far as how far uh, removed from Mars we'll be uh, envisioning ourselves, but, you know, we'll, we are going to be 400 kilometers closer. ...and experiments, and especially when those experiments are related with Mars, and um, we have already completed an uh, experiment related to Mars program uh, when it took 100 days and two weeks and our guys Alek Artemyev and Sergei Ryzansky took part in that experiment and uh, experiments were successfully completed uh, and uh, they felt healthy and were in a good mood. And um, how far do we feel um, from Mars? Um, I can say that um, we are going to be 400 kilometers closer to Mars after our arrival to the International Space Station. Now the question from the kids. Hi, my name is Igor Klinaev. I have a question uh, for Anton. Anton. Where was it that you met your first cosmonaut and who was it? Hi, Igor. Good to see you again. We uh, did cross paths in Star City. Your question is uh, fascinating. I'd say the first cosmonaut that I met was uh, Vasily Tsubliev. The first time I uh, arrived at the training center, I ran into him at the uh, medical building. He was going through some uh, medical research and examination, and I was only there to uh, submit my application to be selected for basic training. Thank you for your answer. I would like to uh, wish all of the crew members uh, good luck and take care. Thank you. At the meeting with Roscosmos Management, I was presented this uh, zero-G toy with the Carousel TV logo that you're here representing. Igor, it's a, it's a good channel. And the space show that you watch, you know, my daughter Kira, she loves to watch that show 24-7. That show about co about space exploration uh, that shows us what her dad's doing and all the other shows on that on that channel. Uh, same exact toy as this one has already been disinfected and uh, put in the orbit, uh, put in this in the vehicle, and I uh, I will have that accompany me during my mission. And I think as long as the station's up there, it will be up there with it. And so, when I was given this toy, I wanted to, uh, uh, per that request, share this toy with my daughter, and I'll ask my doctor to do that for me. Thank you very much. And we're sure that your uh, reports from the orbit will be really fascinating for all the kids that are watching that show. Moving on to the next question. You know, when we're done with the kids' question, it's kind of hard to follow up. Rob Navius from NASA Television uh, for Dan Burbank. Uh, good to see you all here. Dan, you're the first astronaut uh, who will launch in the post-space shuttle era. Uh, what are your thoughts on this particular milestone, its significance at this particular crossroads in human spaceflight history? And I have a follow-up. Rob, it's great to see you. Welcome. Welcome back to Vicanor. I know you've been here many times. Um, <clears throat> and I, I, guess I, would, I guess I would say that um, for me, I'm very encouraged about where we're going from now. Number one, we have got a great international program in the form of the International Space Station and uh, thousands of people all over the world that make this possible. It's a million pounds of hardware and a spectacular laboratory. And uh, to be able to have the honor and the privilege to fly with two great friends in the form of Anton and Anatoly and be able to spend time aboard the space station and perform the experiments in science that, uh, that, are, uh, that, that is really the, uh, the hallmark of what space station was built for is going to be just spectacular. Um, all of us that flew on the space shuttle we're sad to see it retired and sad to see uh, the effect that it has in the near term to our space uh, uh, building workforce. 
But over the horizon here very shortly, I believe we're going to have a whole host of different ways to get to space, many of them commercial. We'll always have the Soyuz. We'll always have uh, vehicles. There's new vehicles being built. Of course, China's flying uh, manned-rated vehicles, and there's a number of them in development in the U.S. and many other places. And to me, um, as I look down the road, those are the things that are going to make it possible for us to continue to thrive in low Earth orbit, to go beyond low Earth orbit to the moon, asteroids, and Mars. And I think we're going to do all those things, and we're going to do all those together. And I really look forward to that. So I'm very, very optimistic. And a quick follow-up for Dan. Um, with an expedited handover coming up from Mike Fossum and his crew, and a compressed four-month increment for you and your crewmates, uh, what will be the most complex element of uh, your four months in orbit? I think the, the hardest thing will be for us um, to, uh, to quickly adapt and, uh, and make the most advantage we can of the short couple of days that we'll have on board with, uh, with Sergey and uh, with Mike and with Satoshi. But uh, I think we've made good progress before this, spending a lot of time talking with them, in some cases almost on a daily basis. And uh, we've done a lot of the handover work with them ahead of time. I still anticipate it'll be a challenge for us, but, um, but uh, we've got a big team on the ground. We have a great crew on the ground here at Baikonur in Russia, in Japan, in the United States, in Europe. And I think that everything will be uh, successful we have a very during our flight and mission. A great team, very experienced team on the ground in Russia here, Baikonur, that are helping us launch in Japan, Europe, Canada. And, uh, and with the help of that great team, it's going to be a great flight. Thank you. Next question, please. Question for Anton. Kajadub Aviation Center where you're trained and served, question from that facility. You see that there's a lot of aviation-friendly uh, folks in here. You know, the folks that have known you for a long time, since your first humble steps, you know, your, uh, you know, the people that studied with you and uh, graduated with you and moved on to uh, uh, bigger uh, tasks from there. What would you say to those who, are, who have dedicated their lives to everything aviation-wise. Thank you, Sergey. Thank you for the kind words. What I want to say to the little kids that are growing to up to uh, growing up to uh, follow in our steps, be good, be kind, be wise humans. Make sure that your parents have a lot to be proud of. Maybe the whole country that you represent will be uh, proud of you. Maybe the whole planet. And I also want to say hello to my. Uh, to the center that I love, the aviation show center. To my co-pilots, to my friends, to the folks that I studied with and uh, learned from. And Natali is a pilot just like me. Daniel is a, is a helicopter pilot. So, you know, as uh, folks who have a lot of aviation experience, we want to say to everybody who is inspired by that to stay inspired by that. Hi. My name is Maxim Andreev. I'm the winner of the best question the contest from the Carousel TV network. I have a question for Anatoly. Anatoly. Would you like to see uh, aliens when you're in space? No. It would be a, a thrill, of course. But all of my colleagues that have flown before me, you know, never shared a story. Never said a word about anything like that existing, so I have no uh, way to believe. But, you know, we'll see. I have four months during which maybe, maybe I'll be able to do that. And if I do see anything like that, I'll make sure to report on that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Do we have any more questions to the crew? We do. Jeremy Diesel from KHOU in Houston for you, Dan. How do you anticipate this being different from the other two times you've made it up into space in the confined space of Soyuz as opposed to the shuttle? 
Well, we don't spend a lot of time. Hi, Jeremy. By the way, welcome. Um, we don't spend that much time um, actually in the Soyuz. It, it does most of its work for us, acting as a uh, as a lifeboat, always uh, ready to return should we need it um, on board. Um, but I think the biggest difference for me um, is launching on a space shuttle and spending two weeks on space station. On both occasions, I knew that two weeks wasn't enough, and uh, and so I knew I wanted to do long duration. So I think the big challenge for us. Uh, um, for our space shuttle flyers is to get ourselves adapted towards thinking about a space mission not as a sprint but as a as a long marathon kind of a race so but uh, but I, I think it's going to be just wonderful to actually spend enough time there to to actually be good at what you're doing to be good at living in space and uh, and to have a part in the science you know the shuttle's been building the space station and and the shuttle crews have been doing that, and I got a chance to do it twice. But uh, to be able to do the science and live and work there, just be absolutely wonderful. Thank you very much for this question. We're approaching the uh, end of our press conference, and we want to say to the crew, there's a lot of people in the world that have been watching your training and are looking forward to your successful launch on the 14th of November. We're getting a lot of calls and a lot of presents for you. What I wanted to show you, Vitaly Petrov, Formula One racer. The rocket guy is one of his nicknames. This is his uh, portrait with the autograph. And, uh, you know, he, as a ground-based rocket, wanted to wish uh, good luck to the actual rocket man, you know, for a successful launch and a safely timely return. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for all the questions. Thank you so much for to the crew for being so patient and thorough in answering. To the Prime crew, have a safe flight, and then a great and successful launch in March to the backup crew. Thank you so much. And now a traditional uh, picture. Prime crew. Please stand so that we can see the GCTC logo in the back and uh, move the chairs out. First, both of the crews and then just the Prime, under the GCTC logo. Center yourselves and uh, get in closer. <laughs> Thumb up. It goes both for the prime and the backup crew. <laughs> Excellent. And now just the prime crew. <laughs> First you look grim and then you smile. Thank you very much.